فقلنا اضربوه ببعضها كذلك يحيي الله الموتى ويريكم آياته لعلكم تعقلون ثم قست قلوبكم من بعد ذلك فهي كالحجارة أو أشد قسوة وإن من الحجارة لما يتفجر منه الأنهار وإن منها لما يشقق فيخرج منه الماء وإن منها لما يهبط من خشية الله وما الله بغافل عما تعملون. First he says he shows you your, the ayat so you can understand. Of, of course, understanding is something that's up here, it's an intellectual thing. Then immediately he says, ثم قصد قلوبكم. Then your hearts became hard. This afternoon I mentioned to those of you who were present, there are two faculties, there's our heart and there's our mind. First Allah questioned, why don't you think? Which is a faculty of the intellect. And immediately he said, there's a reason why you can't think straight. Because you, it's not that you have an intellectual problem, the real difficulty with you guys is you have a spiritual problem. Your hearts became hard. So the intellect is mentioned and the heart is mentioned. There's an integral relationship between these two entities, the, the, the mind and the heart. And the Arabic language, the Arabic of the Qur'an helps us understand some intricacies of that relationship. The word aqal in Arabic literally means to tie. Aqala, to tie something. Like aqalat al mar'atu sha'raha means the woman tied her hair. The woman tied her hair. Iqal is the rope that the Arabs put on top of their heads that they use to, you know, the, you know, seen the Arabs that wear like the, the long scarves and they put the, the cute little rubber thing on top? Well, originally it wasn't a cute little rubber thing, it was a rope. And the rope was there because, not just because the scarf flies off, but because they would take it off and that was their anti-lock brakes for their camel. Okay, they would tie their camel with that rope. It was a means of restraint. Aqal is literally called a means, it's, the intellect is referred to as a means of restraint, a leash. Why? Because your emotions want you to do something, your temptations, your, your uh, you know, sentiments want you to say something, but you hold yourself back when you use your intellect. What we learn from that also is, you know, when you're overly angry, you can't think clearly. When your emotions are high, you can't think clearly. When you're overly sad, overly angry, overly scared, whenever any of those emotions are running high, your mind shuts off. You're, you're not thinking straight. Aqal is a means of restraint. In other words, the, to the Arabs, until you have your emotions under control, Emotions to the Arabs are where, by the way, in the, mar, in, the hind, in, the, in the in the mind or in the heart, in the heart. Until your heart is in check, you can't use your mind properly. Our minds they process things. We calculate with our mind. We analyze with our mind. We understand things with our mind. We memorize. We learn things like that. We do this with our minds, and our minds progressively develop. In other words, the the mind of a child that's four is less advanced, and when it when he becomes six or seven or eight or ten, it starts getting more and more advanced. And when that same person becomes twenty, their mind has matured. And when they become thirty and forty, it's matured even more. So the mind is something that's constantly growing and maturing, and a learning more and more, acquiring more and more. However, the heart is a different kind of entity. The heart doesn't mature or grow, the heart fluctuates. Well, some days you'll have really good days as far as remembering Allah and being cautious of Allah, and other days will be really bad. You have up and down in the heart. And the heart can become hard and the heart can become soft. It can die, it can come back to life, etc. Right? So on the one hand you have this entity that matures, and on the other hand you have this entity that inside of us that is very volatile. It's very, you know, a fragile entity, which is our hearts. We have to take care of this heart. So in, in other words, you know how sometimes the, the khatib will give a khutbah about something you've heard a thousand times, and the first thing that goes on in your head is, man, I already know this. I don't need to hear this again. I already know this. Well, you know it up here. Your mind understands it, but what still needs it? The, the, the heart still needs it. The heart needs the reminder. أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنَّ الْقُلُوبِ فَذَكْرِ إِنَّ فَعَتِ الذِّكْرَى Reminder has benefit, benefit for the hearts. Now, the thing is though, the question is, as far as the, the Qur'an's picture of human psychology, when you and I make a decision, does that decision come from the mind or does it come from the heart? It's a very interesting philosophical question. 
Well, how do we make our decisions? And the, the, the answer to that is, is actually a combination of both, but the heart is in the driver's seat. The heart is actually in the driver's seat as far as the Qur'an's picture of this thing is concerned. Okay? Now, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions their hearts became hard. The, the religious example I wanted to give you. Allah has acknowledged in Surah Al-Baqarah and other places that the Israelites at the time of the Messenger وسلم, were incredibly intelligent people. They're very, very smart people. They understand, they recognize. Later on in the latter half of this surah, we're going to learn when they see the messenger, they know him as well as them recognizing their own children. يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ Even when they change the book, there's one thing to change the book, you didn't realize it's God's book, so I changed it, I'm sorry. I didn't think I could, I thought I could edit it because it's human speech. Allah says, no, يُحَرِّفُونَهُ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا عَقَلُهُ They changed it even after they understood it. In other words, Allah is giving them credit that they actually understood. But what's the problem? There's no problem here. Actually, we even have hadith narrations where two rab- you know, the, the rabbi sent his son to meet the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Go find out if he's the one being promised in our books. So he spends time with the messenger and comes back and he says, so what did you find? He says, there's no doubt about it, that's the guy. That's the final messenger. And they both swear, we swear till our death we will oppose him. <laughs> right? Because their heart is not willing to accept a Gentile. A child of Ismail is not willing to accept it. So Allah says, now at the end of all of this, you understood that He's Allah's Messenger. You understood Allah gives life back you know, after death. You understood that it can only be Allah who parts the water so you can cross. You understood that the water coming out of the boulder can only be from Allah. But that was all up here. It never entered where? In here. It never entered the heart. And so even after seeing all of that, these things were supposed to melt your heart. But even these things could not... I mean a dead guy coming back to life? If you have kind of weak iman in Allah and you see a dead guy coming back to life, by Allah's command in front of your eyes, you would say, you know what, astaghfirullah al-azim, I will take the rest of these last three, four days of Ramadan more seriously. (laughs) Right? Your iman would get straight. But these guys, Allah says, even after that, مِن بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ even after that, your hearts became hard. Because you, it's not that you have an intellectual problem, the real difficulty with you guys is you have a spiritual problem. Your hearts became hard. ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ